Throughout history, there have been a number of executions which were carried out against religious figures and individuals. During the Tudor period, there was great persecution, and many people who believed in different ideas to the king and queen faced even the harshest of deaths. During Elizabeth I's reign, there was a group of Catholics known as the Jesuits, and many who belonged to this group were imprisoned in the Tower of London, and some were even executed. The Jesuits in the Tudor period were considered a dangerous group, and even in the 20th century there were accounts of some Jesuits being executed. One of them was Jose Ramon Miguel Agustin Pro Juarez, who was also known as Miguel Pro. He was a Mexican Jesuit priest who was executed on false charges of bombing, and attempted assassination of the former Mexican president. Join us today as we look at the execution of Miguel Pro, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Miguel Pro was born on the 13th of January 1891 in Guadalupe in Mexico. He was born into a mining family and was the third of seven children. His family were very religious and two of his sisters became nuns. But in August 1911 he joined the Jesuits. He was well regarded as one of his friends said he had never seen such an exquisite wit, never coarse, always sparkling. And by devoting his life to the Jesuit course, he was able to work for charity and also speak out about God amongst like-minded individuals for long periods of time. He also spent a lot of time in the chapel, but in 1911, the long-serving president of Mexico, Diaz was booted from power following a dodgy election, and with this the Mexican Revolution began. Miguel Pro then studied in Mexico, however at the time there was a huge amount of anti-Catholicism in the government, and this forced the Jesuits to flee to the United States. Pro then went to study in Spain, and he taught for three years in Nicaragua. However, following the signature of the new constitution in Mexico, it was very dangerous to be Catholic. The constitution prohibited the Catholic Church in a number of ways, and monasteries and religious orders became banned. This meant Jesuits were being outlawed also, and the rights of Catholic priests and clergy members were being limited, and they were also banned from voting, and were banned from wearing their priest robes. Miguel Pro then continued to travel, and he went to Europe to speak with the French Jesuits, but at this time he was not a very well man. His health got worse, and he was ordained as a priest in Belgium in 1925. He wrote that, How could I explain to you the sweet grace of the Holy Spirit, which invades my poor mind of soul with such heavenly joys? I could not hold back the tears on this day of my ordination, above all of the moment when I was pronounced, together with the bishop, the words of the consecration. After the ceremony, the new priests gave their first blessings to their parents. I went to my room, laid out all of my photographs of my family on the table, and then blessed them from the bottom of my heart. But as a priest, he was now to conduct work for the Jesuits in a more official capacity, and he then worked with the miners of Charleroi, and he managed to convert many of them and preach to them. But then his work in Belgium was cut short, as he underwent operations for stomach ulcers, but he was in good spirits and remained devoted to his prayer. But then in summer 1926 he went back to Mexico, despite it being very dangerous for him. He went to Veracruz and arrived there on the 8th of July, but at the time Plutarch Kalash was the president. He was a virulent anti-Catholic and he enforced the anti-Catholic laws of the constitution and he brought in further penalties for priests who criticised the government. With this many Catholic priests were imprisoned for five years, and they lost lots of money if they wore their clerical clothes in public. This led to some states going further closing all of the Catholic churches, and banning Catholic priests from the state. Many of them were even executed and killed, and some were forced to marry, breaking their vows that they took. Others conducted work underground to avoid persecution and detection. What is crazy about this is that this occurred around a hundred years ago, but the persecution was close to what was happening in the Tudor period around 500 years ago. But Pro maintained an underground ministry, and he would conduct his work in secrecy, living very dangerously. He administered the sacrament in secret to a small group of Catholics, and he was even forced to use his nickname, Kukal. But in October 1926, an arrest warrant was issued for him. He was arrested quickly, but then the following day after his questioning, he was then kept under very close watch by government officials and was released. But there was a failed assassination attempt on the former Mexican president, 
and with this the police used it as an excuse to arrest Miguel Pro. His brothers were also arrested, and a conspirator who was not related to him confessed his role in the assassination, and he claimed that the Pros were not involved. But despite this, Miguel and his brothers were taken to the detective inspector's office in Mexico City, but Miguel Pro would never be freed at all. On the 23rd of November 1927, Miguel Pro was executed. He was not given a trial at all, and the President Kalesh personally gave orders for him to be executed. They used the attempted assassination as an excuse, and Kalesh ordered that the execution of Miguel should be photographed and distributed across the country in newspapers to serve as a warning to rebels. But these images would galvanise the rebels instead. Pro and his brothers were in prison, visited by Generals Roberto Cruz and Palma Lopez at 11pm on the 22nd of November 1927. They were told they would be executed the following day. Miguel Pro the next morning walked from his prison cell to the courtyard, and he walked past his firing squad. What he did next was remarkable. He fell to his knees and blessed the soldiers who would take his life, and then prayed quietly. He was offered a blindfold to cover his eyes, but he refused this, and decided to face his execution with a crucifix in one hand, and his rosary in the other. He then, as a firing squad, took aim, held out his arms as if he was being crucified like Christ, and he shouted, May God have mercy on you, may God bless you, Lord thou knowest I am innocent, with all my heart forgive my enemies. He continued to hold his arms out in a crucified position, and his final words were, Long live Christ the King. Following this, the firing squad shot, and their bullets failed to kill him, so a soldier then executed him with a coup de gras at point-blank range. Pro's funeral procession was huge, and thousands lined the streets to be part of this. Forty thousand lined the route, and twenty thousand waited in the cemetery to see his burial. He was after beatified, and Pope John Paul II in 1988 said, Neither suffering nor serious illness, nor the exhausting ministerial activity, frequently carried out in difficult and dangerous circumstances, could stifle the radiating and contagious joy which he brought to his life for Christ, and which nothing could take away. Indeed, the deepest root of self-sacrificing surrender for the lowly was his passionate love for Jesus Christ and his ardent desire to be conformed to him, even unto death. But Miguel Pro was a man who remained true to his beliefs, even when he knew how much trouble they could get him in, but he paid for this with his life in what was an unjust execution, and it was criminal what happened to him. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.